Hi, I'm Copper Ferreira, Senior Instructor at Colorado State University. In the FAST Allstate excerpts, there are several items that can be addressed here to help with your preparation. The very first thing to be addressed is the complete and utter lack of breath marks that are in this particular excerpt, so we need to put some in. I'll give you a list of some of the following locations where I think it would be really helpful to mark in your breathing for this particular excerpt. So the first one, we're gonna take a breath between measures four and measures five. We'll also wanna put a breath mark between measure seven and measure eight, between measures 18 and 19, and finally between measures 23 and 24. All of these breath marks are gonna go on the bar line. So you're gonna breathe after we finish the last eighth note of each of the previous measures, and you're gonna take a nice big full breath before we start the downbeat of the next measure. It's really important in these excerpts to give yourself time to take a really, really great breath so you can be producing a great sound on the instrument when you are playing. So don't get wrapped up in um, it maybe not fitting with a metronome. Learn how to take these breaths and give the piece some space to breathe as well as yourself. Um, another really important part of prepping this excerpt is to make sure that we're really paying attention to this tempo marking of quarter note equals 138. When we're first starting to learn this, it's gonna be really important that we take that tempo marking down in order to ensure that you're playing with accurate notes, dynamics, rhythms, and articulations. So keep that tempo nice and slow until all of those parameters are set and ready to move on. When all of those parameters are set and ready to go, click that metronome up until we get to that tempo marking of 38. But it's really important that you have a sense of what quarter note equal 138 feels like throughout the course of this excerpt. Um, a second item to keep in mind here is the use of uh, articulation throughout this excerpt. There is a lot of this excerpt that is underneath a slur. So we wanna make sure that we're really blowing through each of these slur markings as we have them. Our air is going all the way to the end of the slur. But when we have these short moments of staccato articulation or broken slurs, for example, measure three, measure five, when we come back to staccatos in measure 13, it's really important in the staccatos that we keep the air moving through those notes. And every time we have a staccato scalar passage, we wanna lead that passage to the downbeat of the next measure. A really great example of this is in um, measure 13. When we have those staccato markings at the end of measure 13, going into the downbeat of 14, we wanna lead those staccatos all the way until that downbeat. When we're finishing that staccato line on the next downbeat, we want to give some time to the downbeat of that next mar bar to really mark it as an arrival point. So I'm just give you an example of this in measure 13. When we have these staccatos, we're going to lead these staccatos to the downbeat of the next measure and really arrive on the downbeat of 14. <laughs> So push through your staccatos and really land on the downbeat of the measures following each of those staccato markings. Some of the other items we wanna address is the idea of length. You'll also find these accents that are marked this way in your part. Anytime we see this accent, it typically means that we want more sound at the front of the note. I would also suggest in this passage, in this excerpt, that we use this marking to also indicate length. So anytime we have that accent, we wanna come at the note with both more front to the note, more sound at the beginning of it, but also more length on each of those notes. This allows your fingers to sort of relax a little bit into the passages following it. So again, give yourself some points of arrival in this excerpt so that your fingers can sort of relax going into the next sections. Additionally, one of the final items we wanna make sure that you're really comfortable with in this particular excerpt is the use of your left hand clarion C. So this C that sits on the third space of the treble clef staff, typically we're playing this with our right hand here in the middle of our top cluster. In this particular passage, because it's in the key of E flat major, we have to make sure that we are equally comfortable playing that C using our left hand pinky. So it's gonna be our left hand pinky and it's going to be this fingering that is sort of what feels like back on your particular instrument. This left hand C is gonna be really, really, really important. The first place that that shows up is in measure eight, when the beginning of that bar begins with an E flat to C motion. We have to be able to play that C on the left hand side so that we're not doubling up on our pinky motion in the right. 
So measure eight is gonna be one example of that. Also in measure 10 on that downbeat, we need to make sure that we're moving also into a left hand C in that particular passage. And throughout these sections with thirds, another left hand C that we need to have marked is in measure 22. You'll also find at the end of that bar on beat four, we need to mark that particular C with a left hand. And finally, in measure 25 and 26, we also will have two left hand C's throughout that passage. So make sure you are equally comfortable using that particular fingering due to the key that we are in in this particular passage. Overall in this, we really wanna stay pretty strict with our time. We wanna try not to push and pull tempo too much, um, especially at the end. I like to just play all the way through this particular excerpt to the very last bar in measure 28 without slowing down too much. Let's just make sure that it kind of ends with a nice full big sound. Additionally, there are a, really a lack of dynamic marking starting at about measure 17. We don't see another dynamic marking through this. So this is an opportunity for you to bring some of your musical thoughts and ideas to how you would like to interpret this. In general, we could follow the natural dynamic curve of the instrument, which is as we're getting higher, we tend to get louder. As we're getting lower, we're getting softer. Something to be aware of on the bass clarinet is especially when we hit these registers of kind of what we call the middle clarion range. So from about our right hand C up to this high clarion G. These notes tend to get a little softer on the bass clarinet, so we need to work a little harder to make sure that they are sounding. So it's especially apparent in measures 25 and 26 and 27. Really make sure in these bars that you're really pushing dynamically through this passage so you can keep your fingers nice and even. take a look through a couple of really important items uh, to help prepare for the slow excerpt for the Allstate Band auditions. The first marking that we need to take close attention to is the look at the Apia Cherry marked in the very beginning of this excerpt. This means at the discretion of the performer in regards to tempo and the use of rubato. This means you get to choose. You have lots of flexibility for what kind of tempos you'd like to use and how you would like to move through each of these individual phrases. What this means is in the beginning, you can go ahead and use a pretty strict tempo marking of quarter note equals 52. And then beginning in measure six, this is when I really start to use this marking of Apia Cherry specifically. At this moment, this is where we can start to push and pull the tempo a little bit more based on what you can do with your breathing and your phrasing. So starting in bar six, I like to take this measure a tempo at that quarter note equals 52. And then you'll note in measure seven, the notation of crescendo and stringendo. Stringendo means get faster. So starting in measure seven, use this as an opportunity to crescendo and also to increase the tempo, a cellarondo through the next three measures from measure seven and measures eight. Use this as an opportunity to get through this with whatever you need for your breathing. Go at the tempo that will help you get through this in one breath. We wanna to try to get to the sort of maximum speed right before the downbeat of measure nine, where we have rollentando and diminuendo marked. Beginning at measure nine, we're gonna finish that downbeat at a nice full forte dynamic level. And starting after that downbeat, we're gonna take a breath after that A on the downbeat of measure nine, and we're gonna begin slowing down and diminuendoing on the second 16th note of measure nine. This is a great spot to kind of pull back that tempo to settle down into our fermata that's marked in measure 10. So use all of the tempo and um, rubato that you can here based on what you can do with your air. The second big thing to take a look at in this excerpt is the use of dynamics. So this excerpt requires big shifts in your dynamic right, range and register. It opens with a piano marking in measures one, and then 
immediately in bar two, we need to increase that dynamic to a mezzo forte. Here we really, really, really want to hear a big difference between piano and mezzo forte in measure two, and then also a big distinction between that and what happens in bar three where it's marked forte. Bar three should be the big full sound and you need to sustain that forte all the way through measure three until the diminuendo is marked at the end of measure four. At the end of measure four, I also like to take just a little bit of time slowing down before I arrive at the downbeat of measure five in conjunction with that diminuendo. Then in um, the end of bar five with that half note on your low A, it's marked forte, and you have two beats to diminuendo to piano. It's very important that you take this opportunity to show the adjudicators your full range of your dynamic capacity. Really see if you can play all of the dynamics that exist between forte marked at the end of measure six into that piano marked on the downbeat of, uh, sorry, at the end of measure five into the downbeat of measure six. When we arrive at measure six, we need to start that whole passage at a nice soft but still supported piano dynamic. As far as breathing is concerned in this particular excerpt, um, there are not a lot of breath marks. There's no breath marks written in. So I'm gonna help you try to figure out where are some great spots to breathe. The first spot that we want to add that's not written to the music is after the low A on the downbeat of measure six, take a nice full breath here before the 16th notes start so that you have plenty of air moving into the stringendo passage. Ideally, we'd like to take one breath going into the and of beat one in measure six and use that one breath to get us all the way until the downbeat of measure nine. If you need to increase your tempo in these three bars to go faster to help get all of that, um, all of those noodles in one breath, please try to get all of that together in with just one gulp of air. Then in measure nine, we're gonna put a breath mark after the low A, the first 16th note of measure nine, take a big full breath here, and then we're gonna begin our rallentando and our diminuendo. We wanna make sure that we start in measure nine at a really full volume forte and give ourselves lots of time to diminuendo all the way to the piano that's marked in measure 10. So these are our two extra breath marks. We're gonna take one after the downbeat of measure six and a breath mark after the downbeat of measure nine to help get through that passage. Finally, there are a few fingerings that we need to be really comfortable with in this particular passage. In measure two, we're going to play that B flat that's marked at a mezzo forte. The traditional fingering for this B flat is the A key plus our register key here in the back. That fingering often produces a B flat that's a little bit softer in volume and usually not as pretty in tone quality. So this is our typical B flat. I'm gonna play measure two with that B flat fingering. <laughs> The sound can be a little bit fuzzy and on some instruments is a much different. An alternative B flat to use in this measure is to use our A key here in the front and then we're gonna use our second top trill key on the right hand side to play that B flat. This B flat tends to be much richer in tone and also steadier to play at a louder dynamic level. So here's that same measure using this alternative B flat fingering. Another option for fingerings here is beginning in measure three is where the C sharp shows up on the third note of that measure. I, you can play C sharp two different ways with both a left pinky, it's gonna be here on the outside, on the left hand outside, or you can also play this C sharp using your right hand pinky in the bottom cluster closest to you. Throughout this excerpt, I really prefer using this right hand C sharp here with our pinky. It gives us a lot more flexibility and it tends to be a little more even in the context of all of these arpeggios. If you can try to use this right hand C sharp fingering beginning in measure three, but continuing throughout the course of the excerpt all the way until measure nine, this tends to be a more fluid option for getting through these passages evenly with less bumps in the road. Overall, we really just wanna make sure that you are using all of your uh, musical expression in this particular excerpt. You have a lot of control over tempo and timing and breathing and phrasing. So take all of the opportunities that you can to really express yourself musically in this excerpt.